Hi guys, it's me, Danielle Danny Buttons, and I marked myself in the last video I filmed, so excuse that, but hey, we're back. Uh, I'm here today with another round of Christmas Top 10. This is episode number two in this little mini series going on in the month of December, and today we're gonna do some color by number because this is the fourth episode I'm filming, and in the other three, I did non-color by number, and I wanna give some color by number some love. So this is Christmas Ceramic Tiles by Prachi Dewan Sachdeva. And this is my first Prachi book, and it's real cute. And I'm excited to see how this page comes out. So I actually did one page in this book, but we'll see what this one looks like. So we can tell it is a sleigh, so that's exciting. Um, I'm using a random assortment of markers because I just like put these random sets together. Hopefully all the colors are here. I'm actually remembering that I had an issue and I took a few of the colors out. So we'll see what happens. But if I have to pause and run away and get another marker, I can do that. Or actually my Cali Arts are right next to me. So if I only need like one, we should be okay. So, all right. I always forget the order of the browns though. So dark brown is one and I already don't see a dark brown. What's going on here? I don't have any browns. I see two and I need three. So I'm just gonna take a dark brown from my Cali Arts. All right, so if you missed last week's episode, top tens are basically when I have a countdown list of some of my favorite things about Christmas. And this week I am talking about my favorite Christmas music. This was one of the hardest ones to figure out because I love so many Christmas songs. So it was hard to narrow it down. And again, I am making this list and filming in mid-November. So Christmas music is just starting up. It's not necessarily in full, full swing. So I feel like I just kept remembering more and more. And I say that because if I missed a good one, it's not my fault, okay? <laughs> in fact, I'm just gonna skip right to it. Honorable mention number two is everything I didn't mention in this list. That's literally what I wrote down. I just like have such a good time with all Christmas music that there's very few songs I don't like. It does exist. There are a few that I'm like, ugh, this is just overplayed or I don't really dig the slow, sad ones as much comparatively, but I love so many Christmas songs. So that's that's it. Every The honorable mention is all the ones I didn't write down. <laughs> so number, my other honorable mention, honorable mention number two, which I guess is number one if we're going backwards is actually a whole album and it is christmas with the rat pack and i am obsessed so christmas with the christmas with the rat pack is frank sinatra dean martin and sammy davis jr and it is my favorite cd and really the only cd i still own and play and i love all of it and a lot of the songs are on here or a few. I actually only, I think I only picked one that's officially, I've only heard on Christmas with the Rat Pack, but some of these songs, like they do their own versions of, I don't know. It's a whole thing. I love that album so much. And that is probably what I'm going to put on after I'm done filming this because I just love it. My grandpa was a huge Frank Sinatra fan and he passed that on to me for sure. And it's such a great album. I actually have bought that CD multiple times because when we used to live in Newark, Sam's car got stolen. And when his car got stolen, they like threw all of his stuff out the car. We got the car back, it was a whole thing. But they got rid of my Christmas with the Rat Pack CD and I bought a second copy of it. So that is how much I love this CD. So there we go. But now I'm gonna go through my top 10 list of my favorite songs. And again, this one's really hard. So like the order might not be what you expect. And the, um, I might've missed some good stuff, but I tried my best to pick ones that were like meaningful to me and my life. And I have to try to figure out which color I meant to be light brown. So one moment, I think that one, that makes sense. So, okay. Number 10. All right, number 10. First, you can see me on screen. 
And I always go in number order while I'm coloring by number also. So that's what's happening here. I'm on number three. Number 10 is the Chipmunk song. I, I think I used to have the Chipmunk song or a Chipmunks album like as a record. Um, I don't know. I don't know how. I think records were very much already on the outs when I was growing up. I'm not positive, but I know my mom had a record player and I owned like two or three of my own records and one of them was the Chipmunks album. So it was quite annoying to listen to, but I enjoyed it. So I love the Chipmunk Christmas song and I love putting on my Chipmunk voice to sing it. So I think I might link some of these down below. I can't tell, like I'm pretty sure everyone knows the Christmas, I mean the Chipmunk song, but sometimes I can't tell which ones of these are like niche and which ones are super popular. So maybe I'll try to link some of them down below. I don't know. I'm also filming really early and I don't know when I'm going to actually upload and edit and all that stuff. So we'll see. But if I didn't link it and you don't know what some of these are and you want links, let me know in the comments. So I love singing the Christmas song and um, I'm definitely a Simon, except I'm short. So I have like the attitude of a Simon and the body of a Theodore. <laughs> So, but also I'm pretty sure Simon's the oldest. I like, there's a lot of things in threes and like me and my cousins, two cousins are very close. So we always like assign ourselves to things of threes. So I am the oldest and I am the nerdiest, but I am the shortest, so I'm a Simon. But anyway, that is number 10. Number nine, I also realized the ones on these lists, the ones I could like think of without having to actually listen, are a lot of the more fun ones. And that's why, again, my honorable mention is everything else because I definitely love a lot of songs, but they just didn't like pop into my head. Number nine though, is a fun one. And it is Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. And ah, we used to torture my grandma with Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. I don't know, torture is definitely too extreme, but we would definitely like sing it to her and laugh at her and be like, ha ha, grandma. Watch out, Grandma. Don't get run over by a reindeer. And like one year I actually bought her a, it's a reindeer, like a, you know, the stuffed animals you can get and like you press the button and they like sing and dance. So it was a reindeer on a snowmobile and it sings Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So I think that song's so funny. And they actually came out with like a cartoon version and it's pretty intense. Um, so it like has the whole song in there and the like backstory of the cartoon is grandma like owned the toy shop and her kids wanted to like take over or something and like set up a hit on grandma. I don't know, but luckily grandma comes back at the end. It's a spoiler, but I don't want anybody to worry about grandma. So, but we love that song and especially the toy and the memories of bothering my grandma about it and thinking it was hysterical. So that is number nine. Number eight is the song that I picked from Christmas with the Rat Pack to talk about. And it is I've Got My Love to Keep Me Warm. And I think in the Christmas with the Rat Pack, it is the Dean Martin version and it's song number one. And I don't know, I just, again, all of them on that album make me so happy but I thought that was a unique one that I don't hear too often outside of this version. I feel like some Christmas songs, and rightfully so, are just like so remade because they're classics so that like so many different artists do renditions, but I don't think there are too many versions of I've Got My Love to Keep Me Warm. And it's one that gets stuck in my head and I'll just like sing the same few lines on repeat. And I'm not gonna do that to you now because it won't come out great. This is the second video I'm filming. My voice is already going, so not gonna put the, you through that, but just know it's my fave. It's a good time. And you should, again, look up the whole Christmas with the Rat Pack CD. If you haven't, you can tell your Alexas if to play it, if you have like Amazon Meet. Oh no, cancel. Canceling. I thought I was quiet enough, but I was not. She heard me, so, but you can tell her to play the album and she will so 
that's a good way to hear it after this. I'm, I'm trying to sell you on it. Like, I got stock in this album. No, I don't. That would be funny, though. Um, yeah, so that's that. Number seven. I can't explain to you. So this one, when I was just looking, I, like, had to... Well, I didn't have to, but I looked up a list of a bunch of great Christmas songs to pick which ones I wanted on my list. And when this one came on list, I was like, oh, absolutely. I love this. This song's great. And it is... Uh, what Christmas Means to Me by Stevie Wonder. But just hearing that title, I can't tell you what the song is. <laughs> I know that they use it in tons of commercial, and it's like, wish you a Merry Christmas, baby. So there was my terrible singing. Didn't mean for that to happen. But I love that song a lot, and it like is very joyous and always makes me feeling jolly. So that song is my number six and it was a surprise to me because I can't even tell you without hearing it the words but when the words are on I jam I jam out and it also comes up a lot on she who must not be named when I just play generic music it'll pop up all the time and I, like I said I just jam out to it and it brings lots of joy so that is why it's number six. Okay, I think I'm going a little bit too fast. This is what I was expecting. Well, not expecting, but this is what has happened in three of the four episodes that I have filmed. But in the tradition episode last week, I actually was really slow. Like, it was very well paced. So I'm going to take a second to take a nice deep breath and color a little bit without talking. So, ah. <sighs> I also... Um, I mentioned last week that I will likely not be doing speed colors for the month of December because it is just too much filming and I'm going to try to finish any pictures off camera and then show you at the end because I do love showing the finished product. Like I feel if you spent all this time with me that you should see the ending. So uh, I don't know. I can't tell if this page will get done uh, entirely on camera or if we're going to have to insert a little clip at the end. But if you saw last week, I managed to finish the whole thing on camera. But it was also a 38 minute video, but it just worked out that way, you know? So the idea is we're gonna go as long as the list needs. Ooh, I went over the lines. Whoopsie doodle. Also, I have not sat and not talked, so that's cool. I'm gonna take a sip of my water. <laughs> Well, there we go. Okay. Oops, and now I just covered my list off to the side. Let's do a few more fours and relax. Ah. Yeah, this set of markers that I'm using is my like Don Quixote markers, or that's what I always call them, that I got randomly on Amazon Prime Day. And I like split it into different sets for different companies and I had to supplement it with a few extras. So this is like one of the tau trees from my original sets that wasn't dried out because I like to try to use every last drop of all my supplies before I give in and get rid of them. So I'm coming near the end of set two of my tau trees, but luckily I have one more set already and then I will likely get another set after that because they are my favorite markers but um santa dad for christmas is getting me some refillable markers to use for my color by number books so i think that will help get help make the tau trees last a lot longer if i'm only using them for non-color by number so i'm very excited for all of that i think that is the end of the color four what is the color five orange so, okay, back to the list. Number six is You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. It's just so fun, and his voice is so, so deep. And I also really enjoy the Grinch movies, and you'll have to tune in next week to see where they rank. <laughs> a nice plug. Um, yeah, I don't know, I just like it, and I think it's so funny, and I think it's, like, so gross. It's like... I wouldn't touch you with a 
39 and a half foot pole. More singing. I can't control myself, guys. I just love the Christmas music too much. So, I'm realizing that there's not as many things to say about individual songs as there is about whole traditions. And that's probably why this video is going much faster. <laughs> but, um... Grinch is a fun one, and I always love it when it randomly comes on the radio. I feel like it's not too popular on the radio, so I always get extra excited, and I'm like, ooh. Given the choice between the two of you, I'd pick the seasick crocodile. <laughs> Guess I'm just gonna keep singing random lines to you. But, and I love, like, I can think of all the imagery in the movies while the song is playing, so. I will say, you will not be finding next week, or I guess in two weeks, the newest, like, 2018 Grinch on my list. I did not enjoy that one, and I'm really surprised that other people did. And Sam and I tried to see it in theaters, and we both fell asleep. We fell asleep and missed, like, half an hour of it. So, yikes. I will likely not even try again, because I have two good Grinches to watch, so I don't need to worry about that Grinch. But... I don't know if that's a surprise. So. But yes. <laughs> Number. Five. Ooh, this is a good one. This one I like a lot. It's I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas. See, this is one of the ones that I'm like, okay, is this widely known? Is this something that less and less people know about? I think it's an older one. And I'm pretty sure my grandma introduced me to this one. But I hear it sometimes on the radio. I think there are some remakes that we've heard. So maybe it's gaining popularity again. But I love it. And because of it, I love getting hippopotamus like items for Christmas. I actually have a shirt that says I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. And last year I got a Squishmallow that's a hippo. And I think I have an ornament too. But I just think hippos are super cool. They're one of my favorite land critters because I like all the big boys for land critters. Um, so hippos are up there on the list because they big boys. And yeah, mostly that. So I want a hippopotamus for Christmas is a favorite and I love to belt that one out. And I'll like put my she who must not be named on full blast and I'll just like Trapes around the house screaming I want a hippopotamus. So that's what you would deal with if you lived with me. <laughs> so, all right, number six. Also, my stomach just made a really large gurgle sound. And as usual, don't know if you heard it or if you did not and I just pointed it out for no reason, but that is my constant battle with stomach gurgles because I don't want to not point it out and you do hear it and you're like, oh, yikes, what was that? But then also, now that I did point it out, maybe you'll be listening harder. I have no idea how good this microphone is. Probably not that good. But I also usually like up the volume in editing so it's better, so who knows? If I was a better editor, I would have to like edit these things out, but I am not, so. We're just gonna have to deal with potential stomach gurgling. I did not yet have any food today and that's probably what's going on. Shouldn't film before eating. But, okay. What number is next on here? I see eight and nine. Eight is green. But I think, is it the darkest green? No, dark green is dark green. Got it. So that's the darkest green. So this is medium green. Ooh, that's pretty dark too, but all right. And the nine, oh, I went over the lines. I'm not being very careful today. Nine is turquoise, right? No, nine is light green. Why would nine be turquoise? I don't know. So let's do that.
and I don't see 10, I don't see 11, or I do see 12. 12 is light blue. These are kind of a weird color combination for a present, but okay, I will trust you. Then 14 is next, which is light purple. <laughs> Lavender. I like this color. Again, I don't really know what's going on in this present, but sure. And 17 is pink. Pink. All right, now there's a bunch of pink so we can get back to our list. So one second, one second. Number, what are we up to? Number three. Okay, this one is a good one. No, wait, this is number four. I hope I've been saying the numbers right the whole time. I have not revealed anything I shouldn't have, but I hope I've been saying the right things. So number four, I love. This one, once I remember that it exists, I will play this on repeat and listen to it a lot. It is Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays by NSYNC. Yes, yes. I actually like sang this song at my bachelorette party. <laughs> my bachelorette party was like, was it a few days after Thanksgiving? I don't know, but I did karaoke and we played this song. And I think we played another song on this list, but I love it. I jam out and it's a classic. It's a perfect song. So if you, again, this one, do people know this one? At this point, NSYNC has been around a long time. And that makes me sad to be like, oh yes, the song from 20 years ago. Like, ugh. But if you have not heard this one, please look this one up. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays by NSYNC. Wonderful. It's a wonderful feeling. Yes, it is a wonderful feeling. Thank you very much. I will retire now. No. <laughs> I love it. So that's another one I will likely play right when I'm done here. And that gets stuck in my head. And that's another thing all year round. I'll just be like, Merry Christmas, Sam, and Happy Holidays. So Sam deals with a lot. He's a very patient boy. <laughs> so peach. What do we got left? Peach, gray, and dark gray. Okay, so I guess this is peach. So that is number four, not number three. Number two, nope, what just happened to me? <laughs> number three is Baby It's Cold Outside. So this song goes through it. And like every year, people flip flop on how they feel about this song. I have always loved it. And I do not think it is an inappropriate song. So my understanding of this song, if you haven't heard it, it's baby, it's um, basically this lady's like, oh, I, I can't stay. And the guy's like, well, it's cold. You should stay. And people have made it seem creepy and that like he's forcing her to stay. But I think what I've always understood is the original intention is it was back in the day where women like couldn't stay or they would be very judged like that's part of it is like oh my mom my mom will be suspicious my aunt talks a lot and like she shouldn't stay because of society and at the end spoiler she does stay i think that then they're both like yeah you're right it's cold so i've always thought of it as like empowering two women and not like creepy and some people say r wordy and I don't like that. So I'm team, it's a good song and it has a good meaning behind it. So, and I just think it's a really, I like singing it. So I don't know, that's my feelings on that. So you can let me know if you are in the op opposing mindset, but that is always what I've thought it to mean. And it's a really good song. And that, there's a version of that also on Christmas with the Rat Pack. So, but there's a bunch of good versions. I'm not really sure what my favorite version is, actually. Uh, some of them, I don't know who sings them as they're happening. So, that's one of them. 
It could be anybody. Okay, there's two left. Do you know what is left? I don't know if it's obvious or not. I think Emily should know at least the number one because I've told her and I told Deb the number one. I spoiled her, but we're not up to number one. We are up to number two. And number two has got to go to my girl, the queen of Christmas, Mariah Carey, with All I Want for Christmas is You. This is another one that makes me feel old, uh, only because I was watching a YouTuber, just this random girl, and I think she was like 25 or 26, which like is not too much younger than me, I didn't think. But she was talking about like different popular artists and whether they like what tier they were. It was like a tier ranking popular artist and if they were like the best ever or if they were just like a one hit wonder, stuff like that. And she came to Mariah Carey and she's like, she just has that Christmas song. Like she's not that good. She only has the one song. And I died a little <laughs> because Mariah Carey has many good songs. Thank you very much. And if you ever need to belt something out, you should put on a Mariah Carey song. So I was shocked that this generation upcoming only knows her for this Christmas song. But you know what? It's a great song. So if they can only know her for one, I guess it's good that it's this one. And I love it and I'm obsessed with it and I will sing it all the time and I'll sing it to Noodles and she's like, whatever, leave me alone. But no, I will not because Noodles, all I want for Christmas is you. Oh, she's not even out here. I thought she was on the couch. That's embarrassing, but she is on the bed relaxing. So, All I Want For Christmas Is You, fabulous song, love it a lot, will recommend. That is my number two. <laughs> okay, we've made it to the top. This, I think, is the most obscure because I don't know if everybody knows this or you have to be like an Italian from the tri-state area because this one's an older one. I think it came out in the 60s. I don't know. Um, if everyone has heard of Lou Monty, do you know what I'm getting at yet? Dominic the Donkey, favorite Christmas song. I'm obsessed. I will definitely link this one down below. Uh, basically, Dominic the Donkey is the Italian Christmas donkey and he helped Santa because the reindeer cannot climb the hills of Italy. <laughs> and it's my favorite thing. And growing up, I was always in charge of making the donkey sounds. So my gr my dad would sing the actual song and then I would just go ee aw, ee aw, ee aw, ee aw. <laughs> but now I get to sing the actual songs and I make Sam ee aw. I've like graduated to the words and I love it and it's so funny. And like, um, Growing up, my grandpa is Italian and could speak Italian, but my grandma was Irish and could not speak Italian, so she wouldn't like let him speak Italian. So in the song, there's like some Italian words, not too much, but there's some. And I remember being like, Grandpa, Grandpa, what's Chucharil mean? And he's like, it means a little horse. And I was like, okay, <laughs> thanks. So like a donkey. And it was just really funny. And we all loved it. And it was like, our family song because we're like, ah, we're Italian. We love it. So he didn't have an accent, by the way, just when he was trying to tell me this in his accent. So, but I love Dominic the Donkey. And if you have not heard it, please, please, after this video, look it up because it's a great time. I have to cough again. Excuse me. <coughs> I am reaching my limit on how much I can film at once. So luckily we've made it to the end of our list. What do you think? Was there any surprises? Do you agree? Please let me know what your favorite Christmas song is. I realized last week in the traditions section, I didn't ask for your favorite traditions. So that's unfortunate from me, but I would love to know your favorite Christmas song. Uh, do you like the sad ones? Like, are you a Christmas shoe kind of kind of person? Or do you like the happy jolly ones? how much of my list overlaps with yours. Let me know, did I miss anything real important? Like any real good ones? I wanna know all of that down below. I am so close to finishing this. I can't tell if I should just try to like go quick and finish on camera 
or if it's not even worth coming back for because it's basically done. Um, I don't really wanna like accidentally go over all of these peach lines. Is this supposed to be peach? And it's definitely not. That's definitely like what other uh, books call tan, isn't it? Oh well. I might end this here, so I'm not coming back. This is enough, I think. So we're at 30 minutes, that was pretty good. So if you made it all the way to the end, I think our secret word today will be bows. Like the present bows on the top of these weirdly colored presents. And like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe anything you wanna comment down below, including our secret word bows. Uh, subscribe if you haven't, I'm a fun time. And I'm going to come at you every day this month with a new video. So hopefully you will stick around and see what's next. That concludes episode two of Christmas Top Tens. We have two more to go. Every, whatever weekday this is, that's when the next one's coming. So I hope you stick around and I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you again soon. Bye, friends.